Hey everybody, Matt here with Crefamoto. Today, we're here to talk to you about our power dial, what it is, why you need it, and how to install it. The power valve on modern two-stroke dirt bikes has essentially one purpose. It's there to broaden power delivery through the engine's RPM range. It's essentially a spring-loaded flap that changes the orifice of the exhaust port. So at lower RPMs, the orifice is small, increasing back pressure, helping the engine build torque. But as the engine builds RPMs, that orifice is enlarged in order to maximize exhaust flow and also maximize power output. Mechanically, there are two springs in this system to determine how the power valve reacts as we build through the RPM range. We have two springs here, one being the auxiliary spring, two being the primary spring. Now chances are, if you bought a pre-TPI two-stroke, your dealer likely gave you a container with two auxiliary springs, one red and one green. There are three springs that can be used in this system. We have a green spring, which is the stiffest spring rate, a yellow spring, which is the moderate spring rate, and that's also OEM, comes stock in your bike, and we have a red spring rate. Now with the red being the softest, it's gonna allow that power valve to open abruptly and deliver immediate aggressive power. As we work on the other end of that spectrum, the green spring's stiff, and it's gonna really limit how quickly that power valve opens. And to you, that's gonna deliver more controllable, smooth power. Yellow kind of bridges the gap and it's suitable for most riders. The other spring in the system is our main spring. And while there aren't springs that you can swap out to change other characteristics, we can change the preload. Now stock form, you can change the preload with a Robertson's wrench. Chances are none of your friends are gonna have this kind of a wrench. You can buy one, but you're gonna haul it in your pack every time you go out and ride. The power dial allows the rider to make on-the-fly adjustments to the preload of that main spring. Now adjusting the preload of the main spring is gonna determine when that power valve starts to open. So for instance, if we decrease the preload, that valve is gonna open much sooner in the RPM range, delivering power more immediately. On the other end of that, if we increase the preload, the power valve is not gonna be able to open until much later in the RPM range. For example, here in Bend, we're fortunate to ride into the winter months, and sometimes we find ourselves on icy, slick trails. Traction is critical in those environments. In that case, we increase the preload on our power valve to really smooth the power delivery and ensure that we don't break the rear wheel loose. On the other end of that, sometimes we'll find ourselves on a motocross track or out in the high desert where it's a little deeper sand, and we reduce the preload to really ensure that the hit comes on much sooner and we get power to the ground. You can also imagine all the other riding terrains or types or rider preferences when you'd want that power to hit a little bit differently. Carrying around a tool to do that would be a royal pain. The best thing about the power dial is it's easy to adjust on the fly. It's also really easy to install. We're gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, we're gonna start by removing this bike from its center stand. Then we're gonna use our center stand to help support the motorcycle when it's leaned over on its side. Now the reason why we're doing it like this is just simply so we don't have to drain any engine oil. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and remove our skid plate here. All right, next, we're gonna take our six millimeter socket and we're gonna remove these two bolts on this cover. Now we can pull our cover out, set that aside. And now we're left with our two springs. So we have our main spring, which is this larger. 
and the auxiliary spring, which is inside. Now with this cover off, we've also exposed the stock preload adjuster here. Now here at Kreft, we clamp onto this preload adjuster with a bench vise, and ultimately that's the best method that we can suggest. However, not everybody has a bench vise, but most people will have a pair of pin spanners. It's also a very cheap tool if you don't have this. And what you can do is install the pins and the holes of this cover. Insert the pins of the spanner into the case cover. Then using our flathead screwdriver, we're gonna count the number of revolutions outward or counterclockwise to find our OEM preload spec. For instance, on our bike, we're at three and a half turns in from full out. Now that we have that noted, rotate the OEM shaft clockwise to unthread it and remove it from the case cover. So before we get started here, we're gonna remove the spindle and tab. You'll note that the, the spindle is not fully threaded in because we have applied a thread locker to ensure that tab stays in place throughout the lifespan of the product. What I'll do here is we wanna get some grease on this O-ring. And we're simply just gonna thread the shaft in place. Now, once we have this shaft threaded partially into this housing, we can use our, our Allen wrench for the spindle. to thread this all the way out. So this is stopped, we can set that aside for a moment. We'll grab our auxiliary spring, our main spring, join the two together until that retainer sits on the inside of the main spring. You'll notice that this is notched to fit within the power valve arm inside the engine here. When you're looking down in, you can see that arm. So just ensure that you have the notch of the spring retainer lined up. With that in, we can grab our cover and power dial shaft, our bolts, And then our six mil socket here. Now you wanna tighten these evenly back and forth. Once they're snug, We'll grab our torque wrench. All right, I have my torque wrench set to eight Newton. With that torqued, I'm gonna grab my power dial tab, spindle, feed that through. I have a three millimeter Allen wrench. You will meet resistance as you're tightening this. It's just the thread locker. You're gonna to wanna to tighten until it bottoms. Now at this point, we can ensure that we're set all the way full counterclockwise and then count in 
to our OEM mark. Now with that installed, the only thing I have left to do is modify our skid plate so we have plenty of clearance to adjust this and we're done. All right, now that I've made some modifications to our skid plate here so we have plenty of clearance when we're out on the trail, we just have a couple bolts. The power dial 3.0 is installed, ready to go. As always, if you guys have any questions regarding installation, product information, anything like that, call us, email us, find us on social media. We're happy to help.